Hi, everyone. Welcome to Books with Butterscotch. This is Butterscotch, and my name is Jordan. Now, Butterscotch, I think you're getting bigger and more grown up every day. Do you agree? I think you're getting smarter, too. Smarter every day. Oh, yes, you're proud. <laughs> you're so big now and so smart that you can walk places by yourself without a grown up. You can walk to the park to play with your friends or walk to your grandma's house all by yourself. And Butterscotch, you know that when you walk somewhere alone, you shouldn't leave the path that takes you there. Is that right? And you know not to talk to strangers on the way. Yes, that shows how grown up you are and how smart you are. You know not to talk to strangers, especially if the stranger is a wolf. Oh, oh, don't be scared. Don't be scared, Butterscotch. There's no wolf here. No, there's, there's no wolf in this house. There's only a wolf in this story. This very old and very famous story called Little Red Riding Hood. Now, there is a very hungry, big, bad wolf in this story, but don't worry about him, Butterscotch. He doesn't win. In the end, everything turns out all right. So you just sit here on your little seat by the window, good bunny, and I'll read. Little Red Riding Hood, retold and illustrated by Trina Shart Hyman. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Elizabeth who lived with her mother in a house on the edge of a village. She was loved by all who knew her, but she was especially dear to her grandmother who loved her more than anything in the world. One day, the grandmother sewed a red velvet cloak with a hood and gave it to Elizabeth for her birthday. It looked so pretty and she liked it so much that she would never wear anything else. And therefore, Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood. Early one morning, her mother said to her, come here, Little Red Riding Hood, and listen to me. I want you to take this loaf of fresh bread, some of this sweet butter, and a bottle of wine to your grandmother. She is sick in bed and they will do her a world of good. Go right away before the sun gets hot. Promise me that you won't daydream and stray off the path and don't run or you will fall down and break the bottle and then there will be no wine for grandmother. And when you get there, please don't forget your manners. Say good morning, please and thank you nicely without staring round about you or sucking your finger. Don't stay too long or else you will tire grandmother. And when you have had a nice visit, come straight home. Yes, mama, said Little Red Riding Hood. I promise I will do just as you tell me. Now, her grandmother lived in a cottage in the middle of the forest, a good half hour's walk from the village. But Little Red Riding Hood knew the way, so she was not afraid to go by herself. When she had walked far enough into the woods to feel just a bit lonely, who should she meet but a sly and hungry old wolf? She had no idea what a wicked animal he was, however, so she was not at all frightened of him. Good morning, Red Riding Hood, he said. 
Good morning, Wolf, she answered politely. Where are you off to so early in the day, my dear? He asked. I'm going to grandmother's. She is sick in bed, you know. Is that so, he murmured. And what have you got in your basket? A loaf of bread, some sweet butter, and a bottle of wine. Mama and I baked yesterday, so I'm taking a loaf to grandmother. It will do her a world of good. Now, isn't that nice? And where does your grandmother live, little Red Riding Hood? Oh, it's a good 15 minutes farther into the wood. Her house is the one by those three big oak trees right next to the blackberry hedge. And there's a stream running by her garden. Surely you know the place, said Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf thought to himself, aha, this tender little creature will be a plump morsel, a good dessert after the old woman. I must be clever about this so that I can make a good meal out of the two of them. He walked along with Little Red Riding Hood for a while, making polite conversation. Then he said, just look at those beautiful wildflowers, Red Riding Hood. They are a sight even for my tired old eyes. For goodness sake, why don't you relax a bit? Look at the world and see how lovely it is. Why, I don't believe you even hear the birds sing or enjoy the sunshine. You are just as solemn and well-behaved as if you were going to school. Everything else is so gay and happy out here in the forest. Then Little Red Riding Hood looked away from the path. And when she saw the sunlight dancing through the trees and the wildflowers and butterflies scattered through the ferns, she thought, I'm sure that grandmother would feel happier if I took her a bunch of flowers. They are a sight for tired old eyes, I know. And it is still quite early in the day. I'll have plenty of time to pick them. So she excused herself and said goodbye to the wolf and wandered off among the trees to pick flowers. Each time she picked one, she always saw another, even prettier one farther away. And so she left the path and went deeper and deeper into the forest. Meanwhile, the wicked wolf went straight off to the grandmother's cottage and knocked softly at the door. Who's there? called the grandmother from her bed. It's me. Little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf in a tiny voice. I have brought you a loaf of bread, some sweet butter, and a bottle of wine. Let me in. You'll have to lift the latch and let yourself in, dear, the grandmother called out. I'm feeling too weak to get out of bed. So the wolf lifted the latch and opened the door. He ran straight to the bed without even saying a good morning. And he ate up the poor old grandmother in one gulp. Then he put on a clean nightgown and shawl that were lying on a chair by the bedside, got into the bed and pulled the bed curtains closer together. In the meantime, Little Red Riding Hood wandered here and there, picking flowers until she had such an armful that she could barely hold them all. Then she suddenly remembered her grandmother and the promise she had made to her mother. So she found her way back to the path and walked straight to the cottage. When she got there, she was amazed to find the door open and she tiptoed in. She felt quite frightened, but she didn't know why. 
What's wrong, she thought. I always like coming to grandmother so much. Why should I feel so afraid? Can it be because she is sick? Good morning, grandmother, she called, but there was no answer. Then she went quietly into the bedroom and pulled the bed curtains back. There lay her grandmother, but she had drawn her shawl down over her face and she looked very odd. Red Riding Hood couldn't help but stare. Grandmother, what big hairy ears you have grown. The better to hear you with, my dear. Oh, grandmother, your eyes are so shiny. The better to see you with, my dear. Your hands look so strange, grandmother. The better to catch you and hug you with, my dear. Please, grandmother, why do you have such big, sharp teeth? Those are to eat you up with, my dear. As the wolf said this, he sprang out of bed and ate up poor little Red Riding Hood. Then, having finished his first good meal in many weeks, that wicked wolf went back to bed, pulled the covers up, and soon was snoring as loudly as you can imagine. Not long after that, a huntsman from the village happened to be passing by the grandmother's cottage. By Jiminy, he thought, the old lady is snoring much too loudly. Maybe I should stop in and see if there is anything the matter with her. So he went right into the house and up to the bed where he saw the wolf fast asleep in the grandmother's nightgown and shawl with a fat stomach full to bursting. Right away, the huntsman guessed what had happened. So here you are, you old sinner, the huntsman said. I've been looking for you all these years and now this is where I find you. He raised his gun to shoot. But then he wondered if the wicked old wolf might have swallowed the grandmother whole, and if perhaps there was a chance she might still be saved. So he took out his knife and quickly killed the wolf while he lay sleeping. Then he carefully cut open the wolf's stomach. At the first cut, he saw the red velvet cloak. And after a few more slashes, a little girl jumped out and cried, oh, thank you. I was very frightened. It was so dark inside the wolf. Next, the grandmother climbed out, alive, but hardly able to breathe from fright and exhaustion. They thanked the huntsman with all their hearts and he was so glad to see them both alive and well that he hugged Little Red Riding Hood and shook the grandmother's hand over and over again. They were all quite happy. The huntsman skinned the wolf and took the pelt home to nail on his door. Little Red Riding Hood and her grandmother sat down together to eat the fresh bread and sweet butter. The grandmother drank some of the wine and Red Riding Hood had a cup of blackberry tea. After a while, the grandmother felt quite strong and healthy and began to clean up the mess that the wolf had left in the cottage.
As Little Red Riding Hood walked home through the woods, she thought to herself, I will never wander off the forest path again, as long as I live. I should have kept my promise to my mother. She was comforted though, that she had at least minded her manners and had always said, good morning, please, and thank you. The end. I hope everyone enjoyed that story. Stay tuned for more great books with butterscotch. Bye-bye.